This conference will now be recorded. Good evening. I'm Dr. Divya from T9 In the sixth chapter, molecular basis of inheritance, we were learning about all the molecular level of inheritance or how at molecular level this inheritance is getting executed. Okay, so so far we have learned about DNA structure, then uh, polynucleotide chain, double helical structure of DNA, then packaging of DNA helix, and how that in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, how it is this uh, DNA packaging in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Then Griffith experiment we learned. Then we learned about DNA as a genetic material and Hershey's and Chase experiment. Then what are all different? Uh, what is the difference between DNA and RNA? Then DNA and the experimental proof for semi-conservative model of DNA that we have learned. Then we learned about the replication machinery and all enzymes, which and all enzymes are related to this. DNA, all those things we learned, or DNA replication, those related enzymes and we have learned. So in today's class, we are going to learn about transcription. Okay. So what is transcription? In general, we can say that transcription means the synthesis of RNA from DNA. So what is transcription? The synthesis of RNA from DNA. So that is called as transcription. So genetic information. The genetic information flows from DNA. Then from DNA to RNA and then it forms the protein. Right. This is what we have learned. That, that is called as a central dogma. Central dogma of molecular biology. So what is transcription? We can say that synthesis of RNA from DNA. From DNA, how RNA is forming, that is called as transcription. Okay. So in that, in transcription, from DNA, RNA is forming. Here you can see this is double-stranded DNA. From that, RNA is forming. And RNA is single-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. So what is that? The flow of information that occurs through a sequence of processes. Here you can see a sequence of process and in that as a sequence that information is flowing from DNA to RNA and then finally it is forming the protein. So genetic information flows from DNA into protein. So in between it is forming RNA. From DNA genetic information is flowing and it is getting expressed in the form of protein. So this flow of information, all this Can you hear now?
Is it audible? Now can you hear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we can hear uh, now. Okay. So in transcription, we can say synthesis of RNA from DNA. So from DNA, RNA is forming. And this RNA, that is the final expression of this RNA is in the form of protein. So how a gene is getting expressed? So the expression is in the form of a protein. So the flow of information that occurs through the sequence of process and final expression is in the form of a protein. So how information is flowing? First DNA, DNA to RNA and RNA to protein, right? DNA is forming RNA, then RNA is forming or it is getting expressed in the form of a protein. So this is called as transcription and then what is transcription from DNA to RNA? That is called, that step is called as uh, transcription. Then from RNA, protein is forming. That is called as translation. Don't get confused from DNA to RNA and then to protein. This is called a central dogma of molecular biology or that is the backbone of molecular biology. In this, DNA to RNA, that step is called as transcription. Then RNA to protein that is called as translation so when all these things occurs so when there is a need there is a need for a particular gene product at a specific cell see when a cell is required a specific product or a product of a gene that time all these occurs that time the dna dna of that cell that produces rna and that rna codes for a spe specific protein okay so that's how it works okay so here from dna to rna forms and here also the rules of the complementary base pairing that works here in this case also that complementary base pairing is working okay here these strands the dna strand this these strand both strands are complementary to each other and that's why they are holding together here, adenine will pair with thymine and guanine with cytosine. So, how usually, how it works is, it is usually complementary base pairing. How complementary base pairing is taking in place? Adenine pair, it's getting paired with thymine and guanine with cytosine. So, here, to complementary. Complementary or complementarity, complementary base pairing, it's taking DNA. So here, in transcription also, the same thing works, right? But in RNA, RNA, what is the difference? In DNA, you can see adenine pairs with thymine, then guanine with cytosine. But in the case of RNA, what is the difference? In RNA, Adenine. Adenine is pairing with uracil. Instead of thymine, uracil is present in RNA. Okay. So in the process of replication, what happens? Whole DNA it is getting duplicated. Right. What is the replication? While writing the central dogma or whole process of this protein formation, first we will write one step, replication. That is DNA replication or the process of replication. What is that? Whole DNA it is getting duplicated or there will be many copies of that DNA, particular DNA, which is coding for RNA. So there will be first the DNA will get duplicated. Okay. But in transcription, in replication, that whole DNA is getting participated. The whole DNA is getting duplicated or copies. It is forming the copies. But in transcription, only one segment of that DNA here, one particular segment of that DNA. And in that one strand, one strand only getting copied, right? It's RNA, RNA is forming in transcription, right? 
So DNA, DNA is double stranded here while transcription or while uh, this transcription process that time whole DNA is not taking part or taking place in that one. What they are doing in that DNA one strand only getting copied because DNA on segment the whole DNA the of the not getting in the Only one strand in a is getting okay. Yeah, Divya, one I put that also. Yeah, the process of copy, but yeah, the cross copy anything from the into strand. Divya, unable to hear Divya. Divya, nothing no. hearing. Divya, not so, hearing. Divya. That is called as transcription. One strand of DNA into RNA. That is called as transcription. So, once the principle of complementary. Can you hear now? Yes. Yes. Deepya, can you hear ma? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but I think my system problem. Okay, Deepya, sorry. Uh, Deepa, can you hear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, the principle of complementarity governs the process of transcription. So what is that? What is the complementarity principle? Adenine pairs with thiamine and guanine with cytosine. That is in the case of DNA. But what happens in the case of RNA? Instead of thiamine, uracil. Uracil will be present. So that forms base pairing. Base pairing, adenine is pairing with uracil in RNA. Okay, so in the process of replication, which one set in the total DNA of an organism gets duplicated. So in the replication process, first replication is taking place. So in that process, the whole DNA or the total DNA of that organism that is getting duplicated. There will be another copy or a duplicated copy of that DNA of the organism. Okay, so in transcription, only a segment of that DNA, this duplicated DNA will be present. So in the process of transcription, from that, only one segment of that DNA, only that strand, only one strand of that DNA is getting copied to RNA. Okay, so here in the process of replication, whole DNA of the organism is getting duplicated or there will be a duplicated copy of the whole DNA of that organism. But in the process of transcription, only one segment of the DNA 
one particular segment of the DNA that also from one strand, only one strand is getting copied, one strand, one segment is getting copied to, into RNA. So next, definitely we will get a doubt. Why? Only one strand is getting copied. Okay, DNA, it's double stranded. So from that, why only one strand is getting copied to RNA? Do you have any idea like how, why one strand, only one strand is getting copied or what would be the reason of that one strand copying or why one strand only getting copied, why both strands are not getting copied during transcription? So you know that RNA, RNA is single stranded and that single stranded RNA is coding for the protein or a particular gene expression. How gene is getting expressed in the form of protein. So the product of that particular gene is a protein. So that particular RNA which codes for that protein that is single stranded. So imagine if both strands, both strands act as a template strand here from this DNA RNA is forming from this one. This double standard DNA you can see here. From that RNA is forming. Only one strand is giving a copy of RNA. And this double standard DNA from that if you are taking one strand. The first strand this one you are taking. And the RNA which one is forming from this. That will be complementary to this strand. Right. Exactly opposite base pairing this adenine will pair with. Instead of thiamine, uracil will form, right? So here in RNA, uracil will be there and guanine with cytosine. So this RNA strand which is formed, that is also complementary. So both strands act as a template strand by chance. See, now in this case, I'm clarifying the doubt why both strands are not copied during transcription. So if both strands act as a template, both may code for RNA molecule, right? This both from this strand also one RNA molecule will come and from the second strand also another RNA molecule will come. But both these form, newly formed RNA molecule both will be having different sequences, right? This first one will be having one uh, sequence and another second strand from second DNA strand which is formed that also will be having another sequence. So if both newly formed these RNA, these are coding for a protein, both proteins will be different. Okay. The first and second strand by chance these both strands are coding for a protein, both code for different RNA molecules. So the protein expression from the same DNA, two different types of RNAs will form. That means both RNAs, both for newly formed RNAs will code for different proteins. Okay. Then what happens? Both sequences will be different and both proteins. One segment of DNA that will form two different proteins. Right. So that may create confusion. So in the genetic information of the system also that may create some kind of confusion or problem. Okay, so from this both strands, only one strand is copying. That is the one reason. Then one more complication is there. What is that? Both strands of DNA that produces RNA. Just imagine both strands are producing RNA. So these produced RNA will be complementary, complementary to each other, right? This first strand will produce one type of RNA and second strand. These strands also will be complementary because DNA forms RNA. That base pair, according to the base pairing rule. And the second strand also forming RNA. So according to that base pairing rule, that will be complementary, right? So these both RNA strands, that will be complementary to each other. Then that complementary strands again that will pair so that forms a double stranded dna so you know that this double stranded dna doesn't call for a protein so in such cases that rna won't be forming protein and that transcription becomes based or that that will be incapable of producing a 
protein. So that transcription becomes useless or that will go waste. That kind of transcription will go waste. Okay. So why both strands does, are not copied during transcription? That is a question here. So first, if both strands act as a template, they would code for RNA molecule with different sequences. Okay, these both strands will code for RNA molecule with different sequences. And in turn, if they code for protein, the sequences of amino acid in proteins would be different. And that different sequences finally will code for different proteins. So the amino acid sequences will be different and the proteins also will be different. Okay, that is one reason. So one segment of DNA would be coding for two different proteins. In such cases, one DNA segment will be coding for two different proteins. And this would complicate the genetic information transfer machinery. So that may create confusions or problems in the genetic information transferring also. So another reason, the second reason is the two RNA molecules it produce simultaneously. If by chance two RNA molecules are simultaneously producing from the same DNA, then that will be complementary to each other. Hence, they may form double-stranded RNA. So there is a chance of forming double-stranded RNA. So you know that double-stranded RNA will prevent that the double stranded RNA that will be the reason for preventing the translation into protein. That RNA won't form protein because double stranded RNA doesn't code for protein and that transcription will go waste or that will become useless. Okay. Next, all these points are very important. Whichever points I have given. In this slide, please note down because it's very, very important for your NEET exam and board exam. Minimum, these many points you should learn from this topic about transcription, translation and all. You have to learn all these points. Next is transcription. Here, transcription unit. So, transcription unit of a DNA that mainly it is having three regions in that DNA. First is the promoter region, second one is the structural gene, and third one is the terminator region. Here, you can see these. These are the seg that two strands of DNA. This is three dash to five dash, and this another green color which we are showing here is five dash to three dash. Both strands of DNA you can see here. Okay, so in this, you can see three regions in a transcription unit and first is promoter, second one is structural gene and third one is a terminator. Okay, this is the promoter region, this is the terminator region and in between that structural gene also will be present. So a promoter sequence, a promoter sequence is a DNA sequence which defines where transcription of a gene begins. Here you can see the structural gene. This structural gene is coding for the protein. So here in transcription or in a transcription unit, you can see a promoter just before the structural gene and after that you can see a terminator also. So this promoter that says or that defines where this transcription of a gene should start or the starting point of a transcription that is defined by this promoter okay then promoter sequence they uh, typically they are located directly upstream okay directly upstream in that region usually or no in normal cases it is located directly upstream or at phi dash end okay phi dash end of the transcription initiation site okay phi dash end see in this 
in transcription or everything we used to say in reference with this coding strand this is the coding strand that i will explain so coding strand according to the coding strand phi dash n okay that place this promoter will be present and next is the structural gene that structural gene that is the uh, this structural gene is including the coding region or from which region that codes for the rna that is called a structural gene then next is the terminator so in a terminator or terminator means that is a sequence of dna which determines the termination or the stopping or where it should get terminated this protein or the formation of this rna that is the terminator okay the formation of this rna where should it get stopped that is decided by the terminator so a transcriptional unit in dna that is having three regions first one is a promoter region then structural gene and a terminator promoter region structural gene and a terminator okay next in a transcriptional unit you can see this is this transcriptional unit is also a dna strand right so in that dna in a structural unit that is having two strands these are having opposite polarity you can see here strand 1 and strand 2 one is the blue color one and another one is the green color one so these are the two strands of the dna then the enzyme dna dependent rna polymerase that is the catalyzing enzyme catalyze this catalyzes the polymerization and that also only in one direction this will catalyze so which and which is the enzyme dna dependent rna polymerase dna dependent rna polymerase this enzyme catalyzes the reaction and that polymerization takes place only in one direction which is the direction phi dash to 3 dash direction phi dash to 3 dash direction okay of coding strand you should remember with regards to the coding strand we are explaining all these things okay which direction dna dependent rna polymerase will catalyze the reaction polymerization reaction in phi dash to 3 dash direction then the strand the strand which is having 3 dash to phi dash polarity that act as a template strand or we will call the template strand okay that act as a template strand or we can call this strand as a template strand okay this is the template strand the strand which is having 3 dash to phi dash polarity 3 dash to phi dash polarity that strand here we have mentioned as blue color so that strand is called as template strand and the other strand you can see here one more strand that strand with phi dash to 3 dash polarity and that will be complementary to this template strand and because you can see these are the strands of the same dna so those will be complementary to each other both strands will be complementary to each other this is from same dna and this strand this strand is dispatched during transcription which strand this phi dash to this both strands they will get separated and this strand is dispatched during transcription so the strand which is not coding for anything that is called as coding strand okay here the strand which is not coding for anything is called as coding strand but in terms of coding strand only most of the points we are going to explain in this in terms of coding strand coding strand what is the polarity of the coding strand phi dash to 3 dash direction and this is not coding for anything that is called as coding strand so the polarity is phi dash to 3 dash direction so the strand which is not coding for anything is called as coding strand and in terms of this coding strand only we are explaining most of the points 
So the two strands have opposite polarity here in this. Here you can see two strands, they have opposite polarity. One is having 3 dash to 5 dash and another one is having 5 dash to 3 dash. So the DNA dependent RNA polymerase catalyzes the polymerization in only one direction. That is 5 dash to 3 dash. Okay. The polymerization or the DNA dependent RNA polymerase, that is the enzyme which is catalyzing this reaction. And that polymerization that catalyzes only in one direction, that is 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So the strand that is having the polarity 3 dash to 5 dash, 3 dash to 5 dash, that acts as a template strand. And this is called as template strand. So the other strand, here you can see another strand that is having the polarity 5 dash to 3 dash. And this, this is displaced during transcription. This strand is displaced during transcription. And in this strand, which is not this strand, the 5 dash to 3 dash direction only, that strand will be displaced during transcription. But that strand is called as the coding strand. But this strand doesn't code for anything, but that is called as the coding strand. Next, in transcription, Uh, you can see here in the diagram, you can see the structural gene. It is the structural gene. This codes for the RNA or protein. So this gene is in between the promoter and terminator. Or the structural gene, it is flanking in between the promoter and terminator. So promoter is towards the phi dash end of the coding strand. That's why I'm saying don't get confused with reference to the coding strand. We are saying all this thing. Okay. So promoter is towards the phi dash end here. Phi dash end of the coding strand. Promoter, you can see promoter towards the phi dash end of the coding strand, not the template strand. Phi dash end of the coding strand. If you are saying phi dash end of the template strand means it will go to opposite direction. Okay, it will come here. So don't get confused. Promoter will be present at the phi dash end of the coding strand. Okay, and this promoter region, it is the DNA sequence and this provides the binding site. Okay, this provides the binding site for the DNA polymerase. This promoter region here, the DNA polymerase enzyme is getting a binding site. Okay. This region, this is the region where the DNA polymerase is getting binding point. Okay. So, based on the presence of based on the presence of that promoter promoter in that transcriptional unit, we can say that or we can define the coding strand and template strand. So where that, uh, which is the coding strand, promoter will be present in the phi dash end of the coding strand and promote uh, this promoter will be present on the three dash end of the template strand. Okay, template strand, with reference to the template strand, if you are getting the question, you can say it is three dash end. With reference to the coding strand, if they are asking the question, you can say it is in the phi dash end. Okay? Don't get confused. You should be clear with this. Then, terminator. Terminator, where it will be present? At the three dash end of the coding strand. And where it will be present at the template strand? At the phi dash end. Okay? So, the promoter and the terminator plan the structural gene in a transcriptional unit. You can see a structural gene which is flanking in between the terminator and the promoter. So the promoter is said to be located towards the phi dash end. Phi dash end or the upstream of the structural gene. Here the structural gene at the starting of the coding strand you can the phi dash end of the coding strand you can see the promoter and 
it is a dna sequence that provides binding site for rna polymerase okay that dna sequence what is the dna sequence that promoter that is the dna sequence that dna sequence provides binding site for dna dependent rna polymerase this promoter at promoter this region the rna polymerase dna dependent rna polymerase is getting a binding site okay then it is the presence of a promoter in a transcription unit that also defines the template and coding strand so based on this promoter presence of a promoter in a transcription unit we can say that which is coding strand and which is template strand 3 dash to 5 dash of a promoter that is called as template strand then coding strand will be in 5 dash to 3 dash direction of a promoter okay so by switching its position with terminator the definition of coding and template strand could be reversed okay so as i said promoter will be present at the 5 dash to 3, 5 dash end of the coding strand and terminator will be present at the 3 dash end of the coding strand okay so in a transcription unit promoter structural gene and terminator will be present and one strand is called as template strand and next strand another strand is called as coding strand okay then next comes the terminator or terminator so terminator that comes towards the 3 dash end or the downstream of 3 dash end of coding strand so coding strand you should note down the coding strand what is coding strand this one actually that doesn't code for anything then terminator terminator usually says the end of the transcription process what is terminator that decides the end of that transcriptional process so in between these additional sequences called regulatory sequences also may come so that also will be present at the phi dash here you can see regulatory sequence also may come that will be present at phi dash or 3 dash n or near or far to the promoter okay so the terminator that is located towards 3 dash end of the coding strand terminator is located towards the 3 dash end of the coding strand here this is this green color one is the coding strand so terminator is located at the 3 dash end of the coding strand then it usually defines the end of the process of transcription terminator defines the end of the transcriptional process so transcriptional process which one is the end process this termination or terminator defines the end of that transcriptional process and there are additional regulatory sequence that may be present for the upstream or downstream to this promoter okay so that regulatory additional regulatory sequences may be near or far to this promoter okay and next transcription unit and the gene transcription unit and the gene next we are going to learn about the transcription unit and the gene so what is the gene a gene is the functional unit of inheritance that is called as a gene functional unit of inheritance a functional unit of inheritance So gene is the functional unit of inheritance.
Can you hear now, Deepa? Can you hear? Yes, Divya, I can hear Divya. Okay, okay. So the functional unit of inheritance that is called as a gene. So that term gene was coined by Johansson in 1909. Johansson coined the term gene and the DNA sequence that is coding for tRNA or rRNA molecule that also defines a gene. This I'll tell everything clearly in further repeated slides you can get clear idea about it. So a gene, it is defined as the functional unit of inheritance. Okay, gene is the functional unit of inheritance. That's how through a gene character is inherited from parents to offspring. That is the inheritance of a gene. So through uh, that inheritance, characters are getting inherited or characters are coming from parents to offspring. Though there is no ambiguity that the genes are located on the DNA, it is difficult to literally define a gene in terms of DNA sequence. So that's why it is very difficult how to define a gene on the basis of a DNA sequence. It's a bit confusing. So the DNA sequence coding for tRNA or rRNA molecule that also defines a gene. Okay. So the functional unit of inheritance is called as a gene. And who coined that? Johansson in 1909. So it is difficult, it is very difficult, literally, it is very difficult to define a gene in terms of DNA sequence and there is no, now the DNA sequence coding for tRNA or rRNA molecule that also defines the gene, okay. So nowadays, uh, the term gene that is replaced by cistron, okay, the term gene, it is replaced by cistron. That means, a cistron means that is a portion of DNA that is having information for that polypeptide chain. For a polypeptide chain or for a protein forming chain, that cistron calling us the term G has replaced in a so, by a system means that is a Information is called strong. Otherwise, it becomes information of a trait or a character. One character is a character or how getting a protein. That is the complete information of that particular protein or particular polypeptide information. And portion the 
Okay, the structural gene in the transcriptional unit here we, we can see the structural gene in a trans that we will say that the bacteria we use on it. Transcriptional unit in monocystrom in the case of bacteria, uh, unit we can say as as a cystron we are carriers, we can say some bacteria. This is that we are They are having their body was having sequences. are getting into their body. You can see they are split. They are having They are. Okay, the Okay, in Interrupted. The coding sequences are getting interrupted in the case of eukaryotes. Exons are the co expressing sequences. Appear coding dotted DNA polypeptide could be said as well. You yes, And the coding sequences or expressed sequences are defined as 
exon which can get encoding sequences coding sequence rna that is codons are the coding sequence that apparently will code rna which that are exons are present rna because definitely it should get uh, that kind of sequence the mature or processed rna because it should code for a protein got it next this exons the exons are interrupted by introns so these exons exons are the coding region so these exons are interrupted by introns this introns introns are the non coding regions so introns or intervening sequences they do not appear in mature or processed rna in mature rna or processed rna introns won't be present introns are the non coding regions exons are the coding regions and the split gene arrangement further complicates the definition of a gene in terms of a dna segment okay so introns this introns interrupts the exons okay introns are the non coding regions these interrupts the exons exons are the coding regions so in a mature or a processed rna this introns or intervening sequences won't be appearing they won't or they do not appear these introns do not appear in a mature or processed rna so in terms of a dna segment if you are saying about a dna segment the split gene arrangement that split gene arrangement what do you mean by split gene arrangement coding and non coding regions in between they are here this is the click gene arrangement here you can see this blue color these are the coding regions here you can see a coding region here another coding region and here blue color one more coding region these are called as exons the coding regions and introns introns are the non coding regions here in between two coding region one non coding region is present so that coding region is getting splitted up that is called as click gene okay so in split gene arrangement that again the complicated definition is coming for a gene because a gene that includes a coding and non coding region in the case of a split gene right so promote and regulatory sequence of a structural gene that affects the inheritance of a character this promoter and structural gene that It depends on that a character is getting inherited. So even though these sequences do not code for any RNA or protein, which region does? <clears throat> this region, which does not code for any RNA or protein, and this regulatory region, regulatory region, such regions, like regulatory regions, they usually they won't code for any RNA or protein. Okay. this also defines the whole performance of a gene okay so the exons are interrupted by introns here you can see the exons coding region they are interrupted by the introns and introns or intervening sequences they do not appear in a mature or processed rna in a mature or a processed rna this introns won't be present and the split gene arrangement further complicate the definition of a gene in terms of a dna segment in a dna segment you can see exons and introns okay so a split gene arrangement this again makes the definition of a gene that the split gene arrangement again makes the definition of a gene in a complicated way because in between exons and introns are coming right so inheritance of a character is also affected by a promoter and a regulatory sequence of a structural gene promoter and regulatory sequence of a structural gene because this regulatory
Thank you.